For the past two years, on-chain matching has been the dominant narrative in the world of decentralized exchanges. Everyone seems to assume this implicit rule without question, that moves the order book, matching engine, and liquidation system entirely on-chain, and all problems will be solved. This is, of course, a major leap forward, but what it primarily solves are issues of trade execution and transparency. That's not the key to determining whether a system can operate without needing a trusted third party. The biggest change brought by on-chain matching is that for the first time, users can see a complete picture of market activity. Every order placed, cancellation, and match is on-chain. They can be audited, transaction by transaction, and no one can alter the recorded history. This is, without a doubt, a tangible improvement, but transparency isn't a promise that the rules won't move. To truly understand the risk profile of an on-chain DEX, asking, is it on-chain matching, is not nearly enough. You have to ask a few more questions. Who wrote the consensus? Who has the authority to change it? And under what circumstances can it be changed? When a crisis hits, who can press the pause button or rewrite a piece of the logic? As long as the answer to these questions points to a specific group of people, the system cannot be considered fully decentralized. You can choose to accept this arrangement or not, but you cannot pretend it doesn't exist. Let's use one of the industry's most prominent examples, Hyperliquid, as a case study. We're not praising or criticizing here, just reviewing three concrete cases on the record. First, the Jelly incident in March 2025. The market for the Jelly token was maliciously manipulated, and the protocol's counterparty vault, HLP, faced potential losses exceeding $10 million. If the original rules were followed strictly, HLP's losses would have exceeded its tolerable threshold, the vault would have instantly become insolvent, and the protocol would have been unable to fulfill its settlement and redemption obligations. So, here is what actually happened in three steps. One, the market was urgently halted. Two, the Oracle price feed was overwritten and the liquidation price was manually adjusted. Three, the team wrote a proposal for this solution, which validators passed unanimously within minutes. From a survival perspective, this was the right move, a textbook crisis response. But it also revealed a crucial fact. Under extreme conditions, the program is not, quote, fully automated and unchangeable. Instead, a group of gatekeepers can intervene at any time to adjust the established rules. Second, the closed source core. Hyperliquid's performance comes from its custom-built Layer 1 blockchain. However, the core program that actually runs the matching and state updates is currently closed source. This creates a subtle discrepancy. You can review the results of the matching process on chain, but you cannot audit the matching engine's code itself, how it's written, or what details have been changed or deleted. You have to trust the binary version released by the team. For validators, there are really only two options, follow the updates or exit the network. In other words, the team remains the one defining the rules. What's public is the result, not all the details inside the program. The third event is the recent Popcat incident. As we've mentioned in previous episodes, most assets on Hyperliquid enter via a cross-chain bridge from Arbitrum. This bridge is an upgradable proxy with an admin controlled by a multi-sig. This means the flow of these assets into and out of the system is not entirely bound by Hyperliquid's own consensus, but rather by the decisions of an external point of authority. This isn't just a theoretical possibility, it has already happened. During the Popcat incident, HLP once again faced massive losses. Subsequently, USDC withdrawals on that bridge were suspended. Within the blockchain, this took the form of parameter tweaks and rule adjustments. Outside the blockchain, it meant effectively locking the door by halting withdrawals. Both actions point to the same thing. A centralized control point exists in a critical position, and it will be activated when risk appears. Of course, Hyperliquid isn't this tied up in everything. On less critical issues like choosing a stablecoin issuer, the team has proactively given voting rights to stakers. This demonstrates a reality. There are tiers to decentralization, areas where they are willing to cede power and areas where they firmly hold on. This is, likely, the true state of most on-chain DEXs today. So if we put these three cases together, the conclusion is quite direct. Even though today's CLOB DEXs that claim to have on-chain matching have made executions sufficiently public and transparent, they still rely heavily on their teams to coordinate and patch the system when it comes to deciding how the consensus itself evolves. Execution can be public, history can be re-verified, and data can be checked, but as long as the power to, quote, change the rules remains concentrated in the hands of a few, the system cannot be called truly decentralized. This is not a criticism of any specific project, but an objective observation of the industry's current state. For now, the only system that comes close to a different state is Bitcoin. Bitcoin has its maintainers. It has core developers and teams that propose code. The difference is, core developers can write code, but they cannot issue a must-upgrade command. The final authority over consensus rests with a global community of miners, node operators, and Bitcoin holders. Anyone can propose a change, but no one has the power to unilaterally push an update and force everyone to adopt it. After 15 years of this tug of war, Bitcoin has demonstrated three key characteristics to the world. One, its code is completely open for anyone to inspect. Two, its hash power is highly distributed, so no single entity can easily dominate a vote. Three, pushing through a fundamental rule change is nearly impossible. This makes Bitcoin one of the few systems that does not rely on a single point of authority to maintain its rules. It's not perfect. It's simply that no single person or institution can press that, quote, force upgrade button. If we distill this entire story into a single idea, 
On-chain matching solves the problem of can transactions be faked. Self-governing consensus aims to solve the problem of who has the authority to change the rules. Some DEXs have done a good job with the first part. As for the second, so far almost no one besides Bitcoin has truly reached. Hyperliquid, like all on-chain DEXs, is still on the journey from transparent execution towards a higher level of governance decentralization. It's a long road ahead, and there will be hurdles along the way. But at least now we can see more clearly, transparency is just the starting point, not the destination.